I'm Francesca, I'm Head of Engineering at AS2. Uh, maybe some of you know AS2 because of Monument Valley, uh, the video game, or because of Mood Notes. Um, well, we don't do just games. Uh, we are actually a digital product studio, and we have about four studios around the world. Not only in London, where we have our game based, but also in Malmo, in Sydney, and in New York. So we are quite diverse. And we don't do just games, we also launch products, services and companies that have a meaningful impact into the world. So we try to see technology with the lens of human being and how technology can impact their lives. Um, and while, while we do that, um, we do that not only with our own IP as a Mood Note or Monument Valley, but we also do with the clients and also with ventures. Uh, when I talk about ventures, I think about dice. Uh, some of you might have used dice to buy ticket. Um, it's uh, dice started as a part of ventures under under us too, but now they are uh, big and grown up. Um, so, in terms of my prediction, uh, the first one I have in my mind is uh, digital twins. Um, maybe some of you have already known this term it's basically a virtual representation of a physical object or process or system and uh, as a technology is not very new uh, is back in 2002 um, but actually no one uh, no one went into a production system with with this technology because iot devices were not that widespread and it was not cost efficient but now that's possible, and the manufacturing or production system are trying to or have started applying this, uh, uh, this tool and this technique to um, understand more about the process, monitor, um, and also predict how the process can, uh, can change, how, how the state of the process can change, and uh, maybe find some efficiency and add value. Where I find this uh, evolving is. Uh, um, when it comes to health. I don't know how many of you, maybe raise your hands, have uh, more than one device that track your heart rate or your steps right now. Couple. Um, I have also a water bottle right now that track how, many, how much water I drink every day. That is quite, quite scary because it like ping me every time I forgot that I need to like drink something. Um, so if you think about the amount of data we have with these devices connected to us, this is the first start of what can be a digital twin. So someone on the other side, maybe a GP, maybe a doctor, can have a constant understanding of what's going on in your body. So my question will be, what with this data people can do to actually um, monitor uh, your, your state and predict possible like state change of your body. Um, another one that interested me particularly is edge computing. Um, in my previous company, we did a lot of work to actually move into the cloud and we thought, okay, done, we move to the cloud. Well, um, I think that's just the beginning. Um, what we are, what I'm seeing more and more, for example, companies like Cisco or HPE, they are trying to move away from this idea of adding uh, one single cloud and try to distribute. Uh, also, thanks to um, IoT devices being widespread in every single things that we have around us. Um, and also, if we think about smart drone or uh, um, AI-powered uh, devices or also autonomous vehicle, they need to um, also be connected and communicate um, very fast with IoT. So the idea of sending this information all the way to the cloud sounds a little bit wrong. It needs to be something that can process and can churn information at the edge. And this is where this technology comes from. Um, that is, uh, I would say, is a little bit of taking cloud computing and putting it to the next level. So how far we can put the processing and the churning of data to the edge so that it doesn't have to go all the way to something very far. Um, last one, uh, mainstream AI. Um, so 
previously, as we mentioned about Alexa and Google, these things are getting more and more uh, uh, evolved and uh, more and more accurate. Um, but what uh, we also, uh, I've also started seeing is um, companies trying to use uh, AI as a way to surprise the user, to connect the user, to communicate in a smart way. Um, and what I see is also companies starting in China, for example, where they really try to push to AI to find something a little bit more interesting that might help banking, it might help security. A perfect example, uh, for example, here in London, of AI used to uh, do something a little bit more interesting is DeepMind. Maybe you have heard of it, it's a um, health part of a big Google group and uh, they have uh, used the power of AI to actually predict and monitor um, um, acute kidney injuries. So this is an injury, maybe a little bit boring, but it's, a little, it's an injury that affects 40,000 people every year in UK, and uh, a quarter of these people could have been saved because uh, if there were enough technology, enough prevention. And uh, uh, DeepMind right now are trying to um, use uh, the, the data they collect from patients to actually prevent and uh, uh, give some information to the doctor to actually be on time to, uh, to cure the patients. And if you're interested, in uh, February this year, they actually saved the first patients. So if you Google it, DeepMind, the first patient, February 2017, you will find the amazing story of how that was useful. So what I see coming in um, 2018 in terms of AI is actually go a little bit broader than just like experimenting with it and just try to do little things, but be a little bit more immersive into banking, into security, into health, and go to the root of what does it mean to bring intelligence into things that is not just about accumulating data and accumulating insight, but is also about learning, about understanding, and also from that, make a judgment. Cool, thank you very much. Cool. Actually, there's a little bit of time left on your 10 minutes, Francesca. Cool. Can I possibly fill a little bit of that time, just ask one question on, were there other things you wanted to talk about that didn't make it into your top three tonight? Um, let's see, um, there were different other things, but I thought they were boring. Um, so one, one thing I wanted to talk about was um, something we saw in 2016, that it was like a big wow. We saw Mirai, for example, uh, there was uh, the use of botnets uh, of things. So how a simple botnet that a few years ago was uh, like made innocent, uh, became something that brought the whole internet down. And now, in 2017, we already have a clone of that Mirai that are impacting uh, things out there, like IO, IO troops or Reaper, if you are a fan like me of security. And uh, they are already spreading the internet and no one is talking about it. And in 2018, that can be the next Mirai and no one is talking about that. So an eye on security, and especially on IoT, um, it, it was something that should be the focus of 2018 because nothing has been done uh, since Mirai and the virus are out there. Cool, cool, thank you. Um, so,